prepping by the numbers. Five SHTF medical essentials that you will need to survive. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. A lot of people in the preparedness community talk about a lot about things that are involving initial care. Initial care is important, but what then? What do you do after initial care? We're so trained and we're so ingrained into our society, into our minds, that that's all we have to do. Like in the military, what are you going to do? Initial care. TCCC. And then you get that guy in a helo, you get that guy in a truck, you get him back to a field hospital, whatever it may be, to the medical trained personnel in a trauma unit. Yeah, same with everyday life. You get hurt, okay, you take initial care of it until the ambulance can get there, take you to the hospital. Well, SHTF is not going to be that way. So many people are going to die from things that wouldn't, we wouldn't even think twice about today, in today's world. We're in that normalcy bias that things will just be fine. and Things will always continue on the way they are. For one example is, how much gauze do you have? Do you have enough for initial treatment? Okay, what about changing those dressings two or three, four times a day for weeks? Maybe for multiple people. Do you have enough for that? Just one example. That's just one example. And training to go along with all this stuff. You can have all the good medical stuff. And I highly recommend you get it. But how effective is, are you going to be with it if you don't have proper training or somebody in your group doesn't have proper training and if somebody in your group has proper training you need to cross they need to be cross training everybody in your group medical is one of those skills that everybody needs to know at least the basics get training first aid stop the bleed T triple C something There's a lot of stuff out there that you can get training, a lot of free trainings or very inexpensive trainings that you can go to and you can attend. There's online training. I like hands-on though, much better. Hands-on is the way to go. That's why I learn best anyway. But a lot of these things you got to think of also, do you have enough of, like I mentioned. But before I get into the things, I want to please encourage you guys to subscribe, to hit that thumbs up, to comment below and to share the videos because you know why? It's very important for the, you know, for that little system that takes a look at videos to get it ranked higher. And what that means is better visibility for more people to be empowered by the videos, to get into the world of preparedness so that they can be more assets. We can build more assets out there versus liabilities. That's why I do this channel. I want to reach people. I want to make a difference, a positive difference. Very important. So if you guys can help me with that, I'd really appreciate it. All right, yes, long-term care, aftercare. That's kind of the direction I'm going with some of this. Um, but some of these items may not be common, top of, the, top of the chain prepper items that people talk about all the time. It's not a tourniquet. It's not an IFAC. I'm not talking about things like that. I'm not talking about, um, you know, any of those kind of things. I'm talking about a lot of the things that are more mundane, but that will keep you alive in a collapse situation. There's a lot of simple injuries that will lead to death. It's only you and your tribe, whether that may be your family, your neighborhood, whatever it is for you. It's only you and the people around you that are going to be able to, and that you'll have to rely on, to deal with all these things. It's, it's going to get ugly, people. Um, okay, so a lot of people have boo-boo kits, meaning, you know, the Band-Aid, the little medical kit, you know, in their cupboard or something like that. has a couple Band-Aids on it. may have some wipes, you know, stuff like that. Very, very basic. Um, then a lot of people have moved up into and gotten IFAX. IFAX are great. Individual first aid kit. That's for trauma care, traumatic injuries, gunshot wounds is what it's for. And then you got, moving up above that, you got your med bags, you got like your squad medic bags, 
your EMT bags, stuff like that. They have a lot more serious stuff in them. Those are expensive though. So a lot of people don't have them. But I'm not talking about those kind of stuff. These are mainly non-IFAC, non, well they may be med bag items, but non-IFAC items. So the five items in no particular order are number one, antibiotics. Broad spectrum antibiotics. You can get them at feed stores, at pet stores, online, fish antibiotics. It's exactly the same thing. They even come in 250, like amoxicillin, fish amox. They call it amoxy or fish amoxy or whatever, fish mox. It comes in 250 milligram capsules or 500 milligram capsules from the ones that I've seen, which happens to be, whoa, the dose for a grown person. Now, check dosing before you use, of course, for your body weight. Make sure you're using it properly. This is where training comes in and knowledge. But you can get them in a lot of different places. Without a prescription, just go get them. It's very important. Which ones do I recommend? You can get penicillin, which is the basic, which a lot of things have developed um, a resistance to. So it's not as effective, but there's penicillin. Then there's amoxic amoxicillin. Amoxicillin is a really good one. Doxycycline is a really good one. Then there's a lot of other ones like uh, um, Cipro, Cep Cepro, whatever. I mean, I forget all the technical names. I know how to say them. <laughs> I'm brain farting a bunch of them right now. Um, there's a lot of different ones that you can go to. You can look online, find a source for antibiotics, and see which ones they have. And then re do the research yourself. Like I said, I'm not a medical trained personnel, so I cannot tell you what you'll need for what in the dosing. I'm not allowed to. But do the research, find out which ones they carry, find out what those antibiotics are used for, and then find out the dosing, and then figure out which ones you need to order. Just a sec. All right, the camera had a little bit of dust on it, I think. Anyway, antibiotics, definitely. I mean, you don't want a simple cut getting infected and then dying from a simple cut in an SHTF scenario. Oh, I got an itch. You don't want to die from something stupid like an infection in an SHTF scenario because, I mean, you're going to get cut. You're going to get little cuts. You're going to get little wounds, and you just don't want that. It's so simple. It's not that expensive. Go get some now antibiotics, stockpile of variety, because you never know what you're going to run up against. And then also get information, books about antibiotics, or print off the information from websites, proper websites, that tell you dosing and what the different antibiotics are used for, so that you can have a paper copy, a hard copy, if we go into a grid down event or whatever, something like that, so that you have a paper copy and you can look at it and figure out what to use for what, when, how, all that kind of stuff. Very important. Training. Number two, I already mentioned it. Gauze. Rolled gauze, compressed gauze. Um, uh, it could be Silox gauze, um, um, quick clot gauze, uh, anything. Sterile gauze. It could be gauze pads, whatever. Just gauze for changing wounds. I like rolled gauze is one of my favorites, although compressed gauze also works. Um, why do I like rolled gauze or compressed gauze? Because I can wound pack with it, I can use it to wrap around a wound, I can you know, ball it all up, create, create a pressure dressing, um, and then wrap it with some duct tape, whatever. Um, rolled gauze, compressed gauze, very, very useful. Um, gauze pads also have their place, get the non-stick. Then there's burn dressings, there's a lot of other stuff like that. You can go that route. But if you think you have enough gauze, double it. Then you might be close to having enough. And then double that. That will be more like how much you'll actually need for any kind of sustained event, for any kind of long-term event. And even then, you'll still run out. So gauze is one of those things that... I say st stack it to the rafters, just like food. Um, you will have uses of it. I mean, seriously. Um, yes, you can take other cloth-like materials, clothing and stuff like that. You can sanitize it and use that. Yes, I get it. But why not have the real thing? 
so you can do it properly. Uh, anyway, so gauze is very important. Number three, you got to clean those wounds, right? Yes, not just rewrap them, so you got to clean them. So wound cleaning and sanitization items. There are several. There are rubbing alcohol you can use, hydrogen peroxide, betadine, um, and there's another one along those lines of betadine. Some people have fish and shellfish allergies. So you can get the non-shellfish based, it's basically, it's betadine. I forget what exactly it's called. It's the one that I stockpile. I stock, I stock the one that is non-shellfish based because I don't know who I'm going to be working on or what kind of allergies they have. I, I, won't, I may not have any indication or have the ability to ask them. So having the non-shellfish based clean, wound cleaner is important to me because then I don't have to worry about it. I know it's good to go. Um, so yes, the ability to clean wounds, to keep them clean is important, very important. Moving on to number four. Let me check the time first because I'm limited in my ability to upload on this rural high speed internet that sucks. Anyway, okay. I'm, I'm good. I just can't go too much longer. Number four, sutures, suture kits, stin, uh, skin staplers and or steri strips. And of course, the training to go along with them. You can get off Amazon, for one example, um, those skin suture practice kits. It's like a rubber pad with these different style cuts and stuff like that. You can practice suturing. Well, the needles and the threads, the sutures that are in those kits, they are labeled for training use only, but they're real sutures. They just can't sell you real sutures. They have to say for training purposes only because you're not a medical professional. It's the same thing. So do your research, figure out which ones you want, which ones you need, the, the types of thread, the thicknesses, the gauges of needles, all that kind of stuff. And then figure out which meets your needs and or just get several of those practice kits because it's good to practice with. And then you can also, if you order several kits, use the board for one of them to practice on and then save all the other ones in your medical bags. Good, good training, good way to practice. And suture, sutures specifically, that's a good way to practice. Skin staplers, same thing. You can use that same kind of, that same board to practice stapling with skin staplers. Training is key, like I said, and steri strips. Those are those strips that you put on and some of them you pull off and it leaves these little strips that basically it goes across the wound and it holds it shut. You can create your own also. There's different ways to do different things. Um, you can actually take duct tape and cut it out so it looks like a steri strip, apply it over the wound, pull it in and attach it. You, so you can make your own. Yes, you can. Duct tape should have made this list but it's not really a medical related item, but it can, you can use it a lot of times. Um, you don't want to direct on the wound, of course. Um, some sterile dressing in between it and the wound, good to go. But anyway, sutures, skin staplers, and, ster and or steri strips, things like that. All right, number five, splints, casts, and braces. A lot of people don't think about this. How many of you have extra, say, um, knee braces, um, elbow braces, ankle braces, wrist braces, neck braces. What happens if somebody gets injured? They need to be immobilized. There are ways you can get, I believe, I don't have any, but there's probably some forms of do-it-your-own, do-it-yourself casts, although don't quote me, I'm not sure about that one. Um, splints are really good though. There's the SAM splints, there's a lot of different splints. I mean, you can go back in there and get two sticks and some duct tape and make a splint. I mean, that's where training comes in. That was, shoot, that was way back in Boy Scouts. Back when I was a kid, we learned how to do that kind of stuff. Just like make a litter, do all this kind of stuff, all this first aid stuff. Because that, back then, Boy Scouts was good. Back then, Boy Scouts gave some valuable, real-world training. It wasn't all about, you know, gender justification or whatever bull BS there is nowadays. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was kind of a side rant. So... It will be important. You won't be able to go to the hospital. Have antibiotics, lots of gauze, wound cleaning substances like alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, betadine, 
Um, there's other ones. Sutures, skin staplers, steri strips, splints, casts, braces. I know that's more than five, but they're topics. So make sure that you have these things so that you can be squared away and you can be ready for, or more ready, to take care of yourself, provide for yourself, and to take care of those you love. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful day, and blessings to you and yours.